If I'm going to do real estate, I have to do what I know. And when I started talking to other realtors, nobody really does condos in Dallas. It was such a small group of us. Hello, welcome to episode 179 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. Joining us today is Dallas-based realtor Kendall Travis. After starting her real estate career in New York City in 2012, Kendall relocated to Turtle Creek, a neighborhood on the north side of Dallas full of high-end residential buildings. Living in condos herself, Kendall has found a niche helping clients relocate to the area for work or downsizing and moving out of surrounding suburbs. Throughout our conversation, Kendall shares the uniqueness of selling condos, why it's so important to educate clients on how the condo lifestyle differs from what they may be used to, and how she has built her sphere of influence in a brand new city. But before we get on to today's featured interview, the all-new Smart Agents Magazine has launched and is full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you will find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Subscribe now to receive your copy of the printed magazine each month and instantly get access to our online agent community and members only templates. Click the link in the episode description or go to smartagents.com forward slash magazine. Also, if you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Kendall Travis. I really enjoyed our conversation and I hope you do as well. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, uh, who you are and where you're at. Uh, my name is Kendall Travis. I'm with a company called Dave Perry Miller. We're, um, our office is in the Park Cities University Park area of Dallas. I've been in real estate since 2012, and I got licensed in New York. Um, I think the cool part about my background and my experience in real estate, getting licensed in New York City, I did it. I've always been in sales. I was selling small offices in New York City. And when I had multiple people saying, oh, hey, okay, great. I got transferred from California to New York. Do you know a realtor? Oh, I got transferred. I'm here in New York. Do you know a realtor? Okay. After the third time, I'm like, I need to get my real estate license. So I got my license. I started doing it as a side hustle. Um, my side hustle turned into a full-time hustle. And I just continued doing real estate in New York. I think I can't remember how long. I think I got it in 12. I left in 17 and moved back to Dallas, which is where I'm from, and got licensed here and then started all over again. Um, even though I'm from here, I haven't been living here for 25 years. So I literally had to start my career all over again, um, which has been an adventure because New York is so different than Dallas and the, the way they do real estate is different and just starting from scratch is different. And the city has changed and the people have changed. It's made Dallas super fun because it's like exploring a brand new city and it's grown so much. And it's such an interesting town. Um, I say the difference between New York and Dallas, no offense to New York. Um, people here are very, very nice and very willing to help. And I think that really helps when you're starting out and rebranding in a new city. So that's kind of how I got started. So obviously, your your most of your real estate expertise is, is it more in the urban luxury? You know, the kind of the the building yes. r rentals. Is that more what you're? Yeah. In line with? So that's I guess we call my niche. Starting out in New York, I was in the city. I never left it. I never sold outside of the city. So you're constantly selling condos or co-ops. So you're you're selling con well, what we what we know as condos. So I've always worked through, you know, HOA boards, financials, pages and pages of horrendous rules and regulations. And that's all I know. So when I transferred and moved to Dallas, I moved into a condo. I was a single girl. That's 
how I've lived in New York and bought a condo. And when I first got here, it wasn't very popular with, I'm not going to call myself young, um, young-ish is what I would call myself. Um, it In Dallas, it's it's a different bag. So it was more of a more mature crowd. I would say people that downsize. So maybe somebody that's raised a family, their kids are well either into college, out of college, have children, and then they downsize to a condo for the ease. I also was doing, you know, I, I, I don't even understand how to deal with a home. You know, I, I've never dealt with plumbing and roof stuff or any of that. So that was my reason for going. But I also was like, if I'm going to do real estate, I have to do what I know. And when I started talking to other realtors, nobody really does condos in Dallas. It was such a small group of us. And I spoke to a woman who has been doing this for over 40 years. Real, she's a very well-known realtor here. And I said, you know, I want to get into condos. And she said, great. She said, there's plenty of room for agents that want to get into your niche or our niche because nobody really likes doing it. Everybody gets scared about, I don't understand the HOA. I don't understand how insurance works. I don't understand even how to sell the lifestyle. So most of the agents I find in Dallas that end up as a buyer's agent, when they're not experienced with it, it's the actual buyers that lead the sale. So the buyers know they want a condo and they don't necessarily get all of the information from the agent because they might not understand it and they're just going to go through with the sale anyway. When a buyer is working with me and they're specifically looking for a condo, I can go through the entire process with them saying, okay, you know, I even offer to show them mine. Do you understand how a condo works? Every condo is different. I'm happy to walk you through my condo. I can walk you through my building. I can show you all the amenities that we have. We have valet services. We have, you know, all the nuances that come with it. You know, I can walk to any restaurants. 20 different restaurants I want from my building. I've got the Katy Trail is right there. There's a lot of lifestyle, urban lifestyle that comes with it that people have to understand it and live it and say, oh, great. I, I, it's down the street for me. Like I can walk out my door and be in a park. I can take an Uber ride that's less than five minutes and be at any number of restaurants, cultural events, movie theaters, et cetera. And it's I think maybe that's the part of me living in New York. I lived in Chicago. I always loved that urban lifestyle and the ease of being close to activities and entertainment that make, I think, continuing to sell it. I live it. I love it. It makes it easier for me to sell to somebody else because I am passionate about the condo lifestyle. So I think it's, it's a fun niche to be in, but it's a very, it's, evolving in Dallas is what I'll say. Right. And I I think you're, you're spot on. Like you have to, you have to live that lifestyle yourself. I feel like to be able to really sell it to somebody that, you know, I'd imagine that a lot of the people that you are selling to are, are maybe relocating for job or, you know, like you said, downsizing. Um, and if you don't have that experience of what all, you know, surrounds the building, Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to, you know, to explain how that lifestyle is going to work. If they, you know, if they're, especially if there's somebody that's lived like me, I have, you know, we have the single family home in the cul-de-sac and we have our little right. community, you know, it's a little bit different. Yeah. And I think, you know, relocating, not just downsizing, like I relocated from New York, I relocated from Chicago, I lived in Paris. I mean, my apartment was in Paris, I think was 200 square feet. It was <laughs> um So going through the whole, okay, so you're moving from a house in a cul-de-sac in the suburbs, you know, your kids are gone. Okay, well, the condo that you're going to move into maybe, I don't know, 2,000, 2,500 square feet, maybe you're moving from 4,000. Okay, well, how how are we going to pare down? So it's kind of walking through that. How do you pare down the furniture? How does that, you know, what are your necessary needs? You know, where can you have an office if you don't have a room for an office? You know, I work sometimes at my kitchen countertop. That is my office at home. You just make do because you just don't have as much space. 
Um, sometimes my coffee table or my couch is my office. So I think understanding all of that because I've been doing it. Look, you know, you send emails from your bed. I mean, it's just you do what you do and you make it work. I think because I've done it and I, people, are, I can't do that. And I'm like, well, then maybe it's just not for you because you have to adjust. It's just, that's just the way it works. But, you know, there's a lot of other things to relocating to. Um, relocating from a suburban or a home into a condo, again, goes back to the lifestyle. What do you want? Your life will change when you're in a condo. We are in close quarters. Um, there's six people, six apartments on my floor. You know, they generally, it's almost like living in a hotel. And I tell people, you are now in a community, you live in a community. So your building has whatever, 85 units, 100 units. You're in the elevators with your neighbors. You're in the elevators with their dogs. You're in the elevators with their kids, their grandkids, friends, et cetera. It's, you know, being friendly, meeting new people. I mean, some people don't like that, but then I'm like, you always have a friend. You always have somebody to talk to. You always have, oh, you know, how did Tim do in his baseball tournament? Um, you know, did you make it to your doctor's appointment? And as a realtor, we love talking to people anyway. This is what we do. So it's just, it's always being able to be a part of somebody's life. And I think some of the people realize that they maybe were more lonely before because you're isolated when you're at a home if you don't have lots of friends in your neighborhood. And it's almost like forced socialization because you can't not talk to anybody really. So it's, I don't know. I like that aspect of it. I think it brings out different parts of your personality that you don't normally have. Like if you're in a bad mood, sometimes you're in a better mood because somebody else, when you come home, they smile at you and they're like, oh my gosh, Kendall, I haven't seen you in forever. You know, you did so good in whatever. I don't know, tournament or something. And then you're like, oh, my day doesn't, it's not that bad. Like right. somebody else thinks I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, selling these properties, I have to imagine you have to really be, uh, you know, you kind of are that you turn into that tour guide almost of the specific area of Dallas that you might be in, whether you're, you know, what side of the city you're on, what amenities yeah. are around there, what, you know, so really, I think it's really cool to be able to get to know your clients and see, you know, what are, what are the things that they like to do and be able to kind of try to fit them in a place that fits those needs. Yeah. And it, you know, you're selling it, but it's also, oh, you know, we got to these five restaurants all the time. So let's go for lunch on Wednesday. And then you can see like, you know, we know the guy that's the at the hostess stand. We know the bartender. We know the valet guy. We know the, I'll tell you the dry cleaner that I go to. I'll tell you, you know, the best Asian place to eat at down the street. And this is the route that you take on the Katy trail to get to this restaurant and, or this hotel or so it's, you kind of get to live your life through other people too, which is super fun. And then when you stay connected to them, they're like, actually, our favorite restaurant is the Mexican place down the street because, you know, whatever. We like their quesadilla is the best or something. So it's it's really fun. It, it is really, it becomes your own little neighborhood of friends and you start running, I run into my clients here and there and it's just a fun community. I, I think it's it's maybe something that I missed in New York because even though we're all on top of each other in New York, there's 9 million people on one island. Um, so you didn't run into people that you knew all the time. And in Dallas, in this particular area where these high rises are, it's very concentrated and we're all on one street. So it's like, we all go to the same places. I mean, it's a real small little community. It's almost like a small town and I really like it. Right. Well, and you know, like you said earlier that there's not a whole lot of agents uh, there that are selling those condos. So all of those people that you, that you meet and that you interact with all the time, the valets, you know, the different uh, restaurant owners, whenever they have somebody that is maybe visiting or, and they hear that they're looking to, you know, by they know who to they know yeah. who to contact. 
Yeah, right. It's um, I haven't gotten it yet from a restaurant owner. I'm hoping that happens soon. <laughs> um, but they do. I mean, they do know if you ask them like who the realtors are that sell in there, they could probably name like the top five. It's just because we all frequent the same places. We all go to the same places. Um, and, you know, when they come over, they know that we're either meeting with clients or we're there with friends or we tell people we're in real estate. Or I think I heard on one of your other podcasts that, you know, we're in real estate. If you hear the word real estate, somebody's like, oh, you're a realtor? What's going on in the market? So it's constant. People just want to hear feedback. Okay, well, what market? Are we talking about the condo market? Are we talking about the suburban market? There's a lot of niche markets within Dallas, but it's a conversation starter. And it's a great way to network, meet people, provide value. Right. When you're marketing to the people that are looking to relocate, what avenues are you are you going about doing that? Well, I get right now, 90% of my business is from my sphere. Mm -hmm. So it's all friends and family and referrals. So I don't, it's not that I don't market, I do. I have yet to get any business from postcards, from magazines. I mean, I've kind of thrown spaghetti against the wall with a lot of those. We've, we've all tried everything. Um, but all of mine come from people that I know or a referral from a client that I've already done business with. Um, I will tell you, I am now doing, um, I'm trying to get into AI. Um, so I've got a company that I'm working with now. So we haven't launched it yet. But it'll be interesting to see. That is one thing I think a lot of realtors have not probably taken advantage of other than to have them write uh, you know, chat GPT for whatever postcard that they're doing or their bio or something like that. So I think that could get interesting, changing a little bit of the trajectory of all of real estate anyway. But is that going to change my business? I don't know, but I'll find out. I think the smart thing to do is we always have to adapt. You know, you're constantly having to adapt to any kind of new technology, what's new. And I look at some of the other agents that are that have been in the business for a very long time. They're fine, never changing because they've got plenty of business. The the clients that they've had their daughters will use them, their sons will use them, their stepsons will use them, their kids will use them. I mean, it's just, they have a forever evergreen business, but I'm newer. I don't have that yet. So I'm like, I have to have another way to source business. And I'm not, a, look, I tried postcards. I'll still send them here and there. I think my name's out there. Again, referencing back to another guy that was on your podcast. Even if they throw it away, they see my picture and they associate Kendall Travis with real estate. So they might not call me, but they'll remember and go, oh yeah, that's right. She's in real estate, lost in the trash. So I'll still do it. I think it's another great way to, you know, potentially see where this AI takes us. Um, it's just another avenue to maybe generate business and or brand recognition. recognition. Yeah. yeah. And you've mentioned that, you know, you, moving back to Dallas, you really didn't have, you know, a sphere there necessarily. So uh, I guess for the sphere that you have been cultivating, is it more so the people that you've been, you know, the selling or the people that you live with, you know, live around that community that you're starting to build within your building? It's really interesting. Uh, so when I moved here, I lived in the W Hotel, which was, they have a condo section where you, residences that you can live in. And I had one, two girlfriends maybe that had relocated from Chicago where I had lived. So I reached out to them and said, Hey, I'm relocating to Dallas. They then introduced me to one girl who was single at the time. And I was single at the time. And that one girl pretty much created my entire sphere. It's crazy. Which also tells you back to my story from New York. Within two months of being in Dallas, I think I had like 13 girlfriends. I lived in New York for 13 years and I think I had three. It's just, it's a totally different bear in New York. I think 
being in real estate or and or being an entrepreneur where you're totally on your own in New York, you become so siloed unless you like it's just so hard to break in. I think if you work for like a company, it's easy to maybe make work friends because you're with them. But even when I was selling offices in New York, I did that for six years. And I had friend friends ish, but like I would go out with them once a quarter, maybe they weren't like close friends of mine. So I just, I, I don't know. New York's a, it's an odd bear. <laughs> um, but coming here, it was just one thing. Everybody connects you with people here, which is why I think I've become so successful. It's because I connect people for, for no real, no reason for my business because Let's say it's somebody that's like, oh, my friend just moved here. Well, I've got a woman now. She moved here. I did not do her real estate deal. I met her after. She moved here from Palm Desert. Didn't know a lot of people. And a friend of mine said, hey, can you reach out to her? I said, absolutely. And I reach out to her every two weeks or so. Hey, let's go walk on the Katy Trail. Hey, let's go have lunch. Let's go get coffee. Because I'm like, people did it for me. I want to do that for them. Because I think the more that you care about people and do nice things for people, it's it's just all comes back in return. And I think people in Dallas tend to have the attitude of being friendly, connecting people. We're very social people. And everybody here is just so darn nice. So I think that's... That's how I kind of built my whole sphere is just, you know, you get a few girls and then you want to help those girls or I want to introduce you to this other lady that I met and you're in software sales. I met somebody that's in software sales. I introduced them, their friends. I don't even talk to them, you know, them about software, but, you know, go out and enjoy yourself. So it's just, I think constantly, I'm constantly thinking about other people. What do you do? What do you enjoy doing? And then when I meet somebody that has those characteristics, you know, I'm like, hey, do you want to meet this person? I think you guys have this in common. It has nothing to do with me having business with them or not. But I think constantly being able to be somebody's friend and know I'm thinking about you and this made me think of you. I think that's just being a good person and helping people. And I think that goes a long way too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, by coming from that mindset, you know, it, obviously you're doing it to build bridges between people and and build your community. But there is that added benefit that it does bring in, you know, get your name out there within that community of somebody that right. is trusted and, you know, right. a, a community advisor almost. Yeah. And I think it's a great way to build up that organic sphere of influence. Yeah. And that's kind of. I don't even think I did it on purpose. I think I just did it because I missed it so much when I was in New York that I was like, okay, I'm going to do everything I can to try to help people in any way that I can when I'm here. And it's not to say no one in New York ever helped me, but it just isn't. It's so transient there. Everybody's so busy. I think it's just a different mindset than it is here. And I think that is just kind of, that was the natural extension of it. And then I think it helps everybody's business. It doesn't matter what you're in. If you're in real estate, if you're in, you know, my girlfriend that's in software sales. Um, I made an introduction at a party for her to meet another girl. They're still friends. My girlfriend doesn't even live here anymore. Now she lives in Florida. But those two are still friends. And guess what? She ended up jumping jobs to the other girl's company because they stayed in touch. So that was one introduction that I made. And then, you know, the ripple effect continued. I actually had dinner with her last night. She was in town. But I mean, it's just like, okay, you know, that's that's a really cool thing to happen that has nothing to do with my business other than I'm just trying to put people together that have stuff in common. Right. When you do, um, you know, get some of these folks that are looking to downsize for one reason or another, um, you know, especially if they if they are moving you know, from the suburbs and they maybe have more space. Uh, tell me, we touched on it a little bit, 
but kind of walk me through a little bit more about that whole, you know, kind of having to explain them how drastic of a change in your lifestyle it's going to be and really kind of help them, you know, guide them through finding the right place for them. Well, I think I'm I'm going through a little bit of that with my parents. Um, I don't think I've sold them quite yet. Um, I do think that I'm trying to steer them to understand they're in their 80s, that it's a simpler lifestyle when you don't have as much stuff and you don't have as much to worry about as far as the roof. My 82-year-old father was cleaning out the gutters, which I was like, Dad, no, no, no. That could be a very bad situation. Um, You don't have to do that in a condo. So I think it's constantly kind of educating them. Um, Like I said before, I walk through people through my apartment when they need to. And I'll say, look, you know, this is all we have. We have 2,000 square feet. We have a two-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath. We have plenty of space. We have all the things that we need in our apartment. We have parties at our place. We have like 50 people in our house. You know, you just, you figure out how to make it work and you figure out how to simplify your life down to the things that you need. You know, kind of going back to what I had said, you adjust, you adjust for your offices, you adjust. Maybe you don't have an eight person sit down dining room table. I guess. Out. We have a little four, a little cat, almost like a cafe table. So when my parents said, "Oh, we're gonna, you know we'll host Thanksgiving," my husband and I are hosting Thanksgiving. My brother, his wife, their daughter are coming in. How are you going to do it? Like, we have tables down in the storage unit. I, I we brought up a big two six foot tables. I covered them with a beautiful tablecloth. We had all the china out. We moved the furniture and my mom came over and she's like, oh my God, how did you do this? I'm like, you just make it work. It's temporary. You guys are going to be here for four hours and we pack it all up and put it all downstairs and it's back to the two bedroom condo again. But you just figure out how to live your lifestyle. So I think, and people also that are living in the condos, we all do that stuff. So they understand, we all understand that this is how you live your life. And then when people that are coming from homes are like, wait, how do you do this? How do you navigate that? I'm like, Oh yeah, we do this all the time. We have staff that will help us. You know, we had a party. I'm like, Hey, can you guys bring up like eight folding chairs? Sure. When do you want them right now? Cool. They bring them up. They drop them off in my apartment. I mean, things like that for the convenience factor some of this stuff is priceless. Yeah. When, so you said there's, uh, in your particular part in Dallas, there are, uh, you know, all the buildings are kind of on the same street. There's a couple different buildings that people could, you know, purchase in. So for you, you know, how important is it to know what all of the different HOA kind of rules and things that go onto each building so that when you are uh, giving people tours of the available options that you have all that available? I mean, I personally think that knowing, not knowing the ins and outs of every single detail, because some of these HOA rules and regs are hundreds of pages long, but knowing the differences between each building and the nuances of the HOA, I mean, I'll brag about myself. I think that's what sets me apart as a realtor selling condos in Turtle Creek. Because if you just have whatever average show realtor from the suburbs of Dallas, they have no idea what to talk to their client about. Like they'll hand them the HOA and the rules and the regs and whatever and say, okay, it's your responsibility, which is true. But for me, I can say, well, this particular building. Their HOA is higher because of these five reasons. This is how this building is run. They also have 30 people on staff. These are the amenities that they offer. This is what to look for in their financials. I can go through those. I kind of, we all kind of talk, by the way, all of us, all the realtors. And then I talk to my building manager. I know some of the other building managers, the other buildings. We know when there's special assessments getting passed, if there's hummings of things that are happening. And I can say, hey, you know, the one across the street is going to get a new boiler 
they're going to have a special assessment next year for a million dollars. You might want to let's go through the minutes so we can kind of see you can you kind of can front load some of the stuff that you understand. And I think, look, we're all going to have special assessments and or the HOAs are going to go up. It's inflation. The price of stuff goes up. That's fine. I think being able to educate your client on, okay, I'm aware. I know what's going on. Let's talk to the building manager. Let's look at the minutes. And okay, these are the questions we need to ask. And are you comfortable with this? Because I think moving from a home into a condo, the scariest part for people that aren't familiar with condos is the unknown. So not understanding how does it work? How does it affect me? If there's a new HO, you know, a new um, special assessment passed or something different changes, like how does that affect me? You know, what's, what's my responsibility? What's the building's responsibility? So I think educating the clients on what's going to affect them, what's not going to affect them, what to look out for, what I, and I'll, I am very, I give my opinion if they ask, I'm like, look, I would feel very comfortable looking at these financials. You're going to be fine. You know, if there was a hundred thousand dollars in this condo and it's, you know, 200 units and it's 40 years old, that's a problem. Um, so I think there's just things that you know, or I know based on experience, but these things all look good. Everything looks to be in line. The building's in good condition. We already know that. And then there's things that if you are not familiar with these buildings, I would never want to get a call from a client a year later. You never told me I should have looked out for that. You know, it's, it's a slippery slope because as an agent, we are there to provide them all the information. I can't, I can't learn and understand all that information for them. I can provide it, provide it to them and tell them, this is what I know. I can't make you comfortable with it. That's for you to decide if you're comfor- comfortable with it. So it's a, it's a real tricky dance to do. And I think you find out very quickly if somebody's ready to make that change or they're not because you lose control, which I think a lot of people have issues with. There's a lot of stuff you cannot control in a condo because it's not a home. Like you can't just have certain things fixed like that. Sometimes you have to have the building engineer come in first because maybe the HVAC guy has never been in a condo and doesn't understand that we're on a boiler system. I mean, there's lots of different little nuances um, that I think people find challenging, but you just have to get comfortable with it. Yeah. When I think that's why having somebody like yourself that, that lives that lifestyle and can, you know, talk about those in real life, you know, ex- with ex- real life experience is so beneficial mm-hmm. to those folks that are looking to make that change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to, uh, talk with us today and, you know, share your, honestly, I think you are, I think you're the first guest we've had in three and a half years that really kind of focuses on the condo uh, experience. So this is a totally new one for us. Oh, cool. Yay. <laughs> I like having a niche. That means my niche is working. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, again, really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with us. Well, thank you so much. It was fun. I really want to thank Kendall for taking the time to talk with us today. And I think it's awesome that she has found a unique niche and is able to help educate clients on alternatives to single family homes. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.